Okay, let's start. Good afternoon. Let's start our presentation. Building cloud integrative application through Kinetic and the Apache Camel Cake. I'd like to give you a brief sub introduction. My name is William Ning Zhang. I'm from the Open Source Center of the Huawei. I've been involved in different kind of the Apache projects for a long time. Well, actually, I've been in this area for a long time, so I am the Apache member. Before I joined the Huawei, I was involved in the Apache Camel development, but currently there are a lot of new things in the Apache. And that's why that I also involved a lot of the invested a lot of time in the Apache program. And today I would like to share with you a lot about Apache and the Camel Cake. My name is Zhang Longchen. I'm also from Huawei. Before I was involved in the architecture of the past, but in the past four one years. And I also involved in the architectures in the iPads and Surface and the past. Today I would like to share with you that the difficulties and the challenges when we carry out the smart park and how do we use the Apache Camel to solve the problems we met. And later, I would like to use the camel K and the Canadian to run a camel application demo to go through the whole process. So this is the agenda of our presentation today. Just now I just told you that in the past five, um, I was involved in the integration of the iPad and the pass and I visited the clients very often. So this is how it looks. In the smart part, there are different kind of the machines and in each part there is a management system just like each install. And then we'll just scan our car and then go into the park. It looks really simple. Yeah, but it's really efficient as well. But let's imagine that if we can all these kind of the visitor system, the textile system and the car system can be integrated together to the AI, whether we can have any new applications or not. In the small park, and we also mentioned something like scan your face and then you can be authorized. And in this way, the camera and the tensile, they are really simple system, but we can have the integration platform to connect the camera data together. And then we are the camera recognition to recognize the person and then in the visitor system we can see that whether a person can be authorized to go through or not or we can also use this system to tell the customer service that uh, your VIP uh, client has already become and uh, we like to tell the manager of the tensile system to tell them when to open and close the tensile and actually we have already met a lot of the a lot of the scenarios like that before. And I would like to share with you the simple. And after the camera just catch the face of the system and the information or the message just sent to the integration app. And then the face of the person can be recognized. And then in the visitor system, and it will be told that whether it is a VIP, whether it is a real visitor, whether it is a threatened one or not. And then it will tell the receptionist that, well, please receive your VIPs from the front desk and then tell the train cell to open or to stop. So this is the solution, detailed solution of the small park. And all these kind of system can be combined to the integration system or the platform and form a new application which is called integration app so how can we achieve the integration app and here we don't have the tensile so I would like to give you a really simple demo for the tensile 
it will be replaced by this robot. On this robot, there is this mode camera. When it catch my face, my face info will be uploaded to the Integrate app, and then the will have the visitor system. We'll have a very really simple visitor system for demo. It can be record that the person is the VIP or not VIP. We also have the mock system. It will be connected as well. When it is connected, when the VIP or non-VIP visitor is come, and I will receive the information or the message via my mobile phone. And we also have the queue, which will ask you some instructions as well. If we would like to open the turnstile, the queue will be on, and then the turnstile will be opened. So via this integration app, we can combine all the system together and generate a new application. So this is what our demonstration is about. Okay, so William, and please introduce that. How can we achieve that? Well, my co-worker is my project manager, and he just assigned me a really interesting project. So after I've received this assignment, how can we achieve that? Now I would like to give you a brief introduction of the integration. Well, actually, it is very really simple. We just combine the application A and application B together in order to find these two. Maybe these two applications cannot be communicated to each other. We need to process some data. In the past, we will via the database to do that. The application A and app B will be access to the database, and then they can commute to each other. So it is a really old way for the integration. But for the camel, it is really interesting, and it would have. A lot of the abstracts, for example, the abstracts of the DSA. In this way, we can connect the app A and app B. Yes, we'll process some data. We'll do something later in our case, and I will elaborate that in details. And how can we achieve the integrations of the apps used in the smart park? And currently, we already have the cloud. So whether we can use all these kind of the scenarios in the cloud or not, well, actually, you can find out the answers later when we introduce you the camera key. So let's go back to our topic. First, I'd like to introduce you the Apache Camel. What is that? And it has already been available for over 12 years. And I've been involved in these projects for more than eight or nine years. From well, actually, not continuously. Well, for the camel, it is really good for the integration because the kit is really small. In the past, when we did the ESP, the camel focused on the process of the message and work as the router, and it worked really well. And it is the Java-based integration framework. So it is easy to run, and later I will like to give you some concrete cases later as well. And it can also be able to implicate the EIP, which is the Enterprise Integration Pattern, so that it can be used in scenarios related to the integration. So when you develop the apps, a lot of the codes are repeated. So if we can abstract this kind of the repeated parts, the lines of the codes would be reduced. Well, actually, currently, you can tell that how many lines of the code I will write can make this kind of the integration available. Well, actually, you can have your guess in your mind, and later I will tell you the real answer for the camel. It is really active. The community is really active. It provides over 300 components for the camel components. You can understand them in this way. For example, if I would like to integrate it to FTP or the SMS of the Amazon, if we need to communicate it with them, all these kind of the complicated uh, com 
fatful components can be used as well. And actually, in the camel, it has less than ten core components, but it has over three hundred components for maintenance. So, if you have different kind of requirements for the application, your requirements can be met. Because that you can use some compo components available there, and actually this is one of the core reason for me to use the Camel to make this integration app. So just now my colleague talked about that Camel has been working on integration for a decade, more than ten years. It is a very powerful tool, and uh, we have this uh, Roman server. Roman service. This Roman service works on different uh, integration of uh, apps. It is powered by Apache Camel. The core of uh, this Roma is a uh, Camel, and we it has four features. One called ABCB. A is application to application. That means the integration on the cloud and off the cloud. B means um, our own, uh, the integration of our own app with uh, the partners' uh, app. C means cloud. We have this. We know that uh, cloud has uh, there are private cloud, public cloud, and there are many vendors for cloud, public cloud. So, so C depend, means the cloud integration, and D means device like. Uh, the device and IoT, how they can be integrated. So the Roma integration platform works on these four aspects, or the four scenarios. There is no much, uh, no many codes required. By pulling them, then these four ABCD can be combined or integrated. So my colleague had explained that for the camel, it has its own integration pattern. For the programming interface of users, it is realized by this integration pattern here. Here you can see there are about 50 models. Through these models, the issues common, the common issues in these scenarios can be addressed easily. There are some core modules. One is related to information or messaging. Messaging, uh, like message construction, for example, in terms of messaging, there may be some message may be deployed in different places to enhance the messaging uh, efficiency. Second is the messaging consumption, like through pooling from database. So that is a monitoring SDP, like from a, if there is a message from a point and point we can respond to that. And for message yeah. there is multicast or aggregated approach. It. For example, when you receive a message you may need to notify A B C the three subsystems and these A B C systems will respond to you and you need to handle their responses and aggreg aggregate these responses. And in this case, EIP has uh, the mature models to deal with that. And the CAMO is a specific reality or realization of uh, EIP. You can choose corresponding DSL. Later, I will give you specific examples. So this is an, a CAMO DSL example. This looks like Lego. So the EIP is the standard components of Lego. When we do the integration, we use these standard components and put them together. Then we have this um, integration or the EIP. EIP. So it, yeah, Lego is a good metaphor. When you build a Lego like air, aircraft model, 
you use different uh, components. What we do is the same. We develop this basic um, standard models or, or components, and you can put together these uh, components and make your own model. Now I give you a specific example here. This is a content-based content-based route router. So after certain con conditions is met, the message can be routed to node A. And if conditions couldn't met, then the message can be routed to node B. It's a similar to the regular code writing here. First, we have a from like the starting point of starting point node. We get the message. This is a sort of message, and we'll make a judgment whether it is a bug or not. And it, if it's a bug and this message is routed to another queue, and when we write the camel application, we don't need to use a message queue. We can use other things like direct endpoint or SEDA endpoint to do the job. Then, we, in this way, the message queue won't be required. In addition to the Java DSL, and it also supports other languages. This is the SML uh, DSL, and if you have used other apps, you will notice that you don't need to write a lot of code. You just start the first step, then the SML can uh, load it, the rules. Take EIT an example. First, we will have a component or a node. This node, let's say like a camera, it will capture the information. And on its edge, it has this uh, facial recognition function. Then through this transformation, it will transform this data into data recognizable by the visitor visitor system. Then it will be transferred into EIP component. Then it can we can send this to the visitor system, and the visitor system will respond to it and give feedback. And that will evolve our judgment. We will need to make a judge. We need to judge whether it is allowed or not, and if it is allowed, whether it is a VIP or non-VIP, then this information will be sent back to the notification system on the right, top right, and this component is transferred into Cosmo, uh, uh, into a data uh, format that is recognizable, recognized by these Cosmo blocks. So throughout the process, it is built by these seven blocks. These seven blocks are the core modules in this camera. So this is the concept for this structure. Now we can see the take a look at the specific code. Basically, it involves like twenty codes, and I think we can reduce reduce uh, some codes, like a header, or, and uh, all the codes are published GitHub, and you can uh, download it. So the first two lines is a disclaimer about the RESTful endpoint. Then Cosmo can communicate with the route rules. Then there is a service call. 
that means that, that would be our visitor system. The visitor system will check in the visitors, and we will get the information from the visitor system because we use the GS JSON pass to 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 process the data. Then we can get the visitor's name. Then the information will be transmit to next node. Regarding for notification service, it's also easy. We add one DSL. This DSL will make judgment. It will judge the name of the visitor, and if the visitor is X, then we will add VIP to uh, in front of it. And with this VIP header, VIP header, and then this information can be transmitted to the next level, the the service, and the the notification will be sent back to the Cosmo. So basically, it's a it's a link or a glue that connects three systems. So the endpoint can have communication with uh, remote services. <coughs> so there are only twenty lines of code. Does it mean that I, after I finish these twenty lines, then it can run or not? Um, actually, it still involves other work. First, we need to generate relevant uh, files. You can go to the GitHub to check the information. In the interest of time, I will skip that. Later on, I will run a demo. We also need to define camel and uh, component. If we want to run it on Kubernetes, we also need to add the executable uh, procedure and push it to the server. Push it to the image server, and then the image server will run it. If there's no major change to the route rules, then we can uh, do some dynamic uh, run. I will explain later. I've been working on Camel for quite a long time, so I have. Uh, it's fair to say that I have witnessed the involvement of Camel, and uh, I found that a lot of people have uh, introduced some new elements to Camel. For the SOA in the past, it was based on ESB to deal with message. So in a uh, camel was a route engine based on this. And now we see some typical scenarios which provide which uh, fundamental or basic service. And based on this uh, basic service, then we can provide combined combinations of service like. In our case, the notification system, visitor system, and the combined system to provide this notification and visitor system. So, this is we also have the microservice architecture, but it also involves a lot of manpower in order to run it. Therefore, later now we can leverage Kubernetes, whether it is a service mesh, which can help us to block the uh, network issues, and we can also leverage uh, Kubernetes resource scheduling to drive the routing rules. That's why we use the camel to do the service. So speaking of this, I want to talk about the Camel K. Camel K is Kubernetes-based, 
and then we run the camel application natively on the Kubernetes, and we also provide a lightweight integration platform via the camel K. The router policies can be deployed to the Kubernetes cluster, and later I will tell you how this one can be achieved in details. And it also leverage the operator. SK, SDK, it can also relate to the achievements of the CRK. And in the presentations yesterday and today, we already covered these parts and we won't talk about that in details, but we will give you a really concrete case. And for the Camel K, it builds the application on top of the Kubernetes banding, and I would like to give you some detailed explanation later. And I'll just tell you there are 20 lines of the code, and we need to have to do the Spring Boost. And we need to add it, and then for outsourcing, and we need to generate and register a mirror to deploy it in the Kubernetes and we need to use the orchestrate kit on the Kubernetes and to make it a project which can be running. So there are a lot of things we need to do behind the 20 lines of the code but how can we do that easily and fastly? If we pay attention to only the 20 lines of the code, well actually that is the job of the Camel K. What does it do? The 20 lines of the code will transfer to the CRB. The resources will be defined as a CRD and finally they only use the one case or one tool to convert it to a object of the CR on the Kubernetes and it will have the operator. The operator will be the Kubernetes controller. It is for the DSL controller and the controller will complete is job. For example, if we choose the mirror for the compiling, and after compiling, it will generate a project, and the maximum dependencies will be also be included in this framework as well. And here, I just tell you that there are lang several languages you can use to develop the DRL. It can be the SML, it can be other languages such as a Gurmi or other languages. So you can use various languages to do this and then all this kind of the language can be recognized and after you've done this part the mirror will be built and after the mirror is built it will be deployed to the entire Kubernetes environment so will it do it for us which we have to do manually well it need to use the camel of the Kubernetes to create the DSL 20 lines code or 20 lines of the objectives. So it will do everything for you. And finally, what we get is the integrated app. And this is how the CRD look in general. You can see that it will add these standard Kubernetes thing, for example, version, remain data, and the specs. And the most important part of the spec is the last one. And it is the 20 lines DSL documents that we created. And finally, all the things we have to do manually in the past can be automated. And then we just submit it and then generate it. In the DSL will be changed very open, right? So every time I change the SDL, they will run in the backstage for us. The speed is really fast so that it can speed up an application and integration efficiency and productivity. And this is a simple introduction of the operator SDK. And if you are interested, you can look at it. And if you need to define CRD for yourself, you think I think that it is quite complicated. So what we need to do is to define and describe the structure properly, and then it will use the functions of the operator SDK will write the code for you. So what we need to do is to write the code for a controller. So I think that the jobs of the deployment is really simple. So if you are interested, you can have a look at the code of the Camel K. And now I would like to give you a brief demo of our environment. So this is the demo, which is the recorder of 
the uh, of, of our screen but if we still have some time left I would like to give you a live demo and this is the Kubernetes environments we have already deployed and this screen shows that we already deployed the CamelK operator to the Kubernetes environment and it is running on the Kubernetes and this one the router we need to deploy it as well and it will run a CamelK instruction and then the deployment compilation and operation will be done automatically and in this way we can start it so what they create is the user SD object and after this one is created the operator will do everything for you you can see that the operator has already built the router and has already deployed the router and in here we need to forward and then we can convert our requirements or convert it to the Kubernetes and you can see that in mixed stage there are two services has already been recorded the first one is the visitor service which has already been started in the backstage the purpose is to deal with the application of the visiting by the guests or the visitors and this is the modification services and if you are interested you can connect it to it via your mobile phone it has already been deployed on the public network and if you are interested you can try it and this is a one based on the web socket so that you can get the information you can see it has already been started well the application of the Cosmo has already been initiated The notification has already been sent to the mobile phone of the receptionist. Well, actually, another visitor is approaching. Well, for different usage users, you will receive different types of the message or notifications. You can see that another visitor is coming. Oh, this one is a VIP visitor. Yes, he's an she's a VIP. Okay, so this is the end of the demo. Due to the time limitation, I will go through these parts really quick. Uh, Kinetic has already been mentioned for several times, and I don't go through that very detail for the Kinetics we don't use the bill we only use the serving and eventing and with the eventing of the kinetic it enables us to initiate the router so that the standard loading can be did can be done automatically and i just mentioned that i can deploy to the sensor to the cloud and in the backstage um, it will be packed and turn that into the mirror automatically but currently we miss a time we don't have the time we don't know that when we can pull it but with the service of the k natives we can pull it really conveniently and another one is the auto scaling of the k native when you don't have any request it can be downscale so the service instance can be turned into zero so in this way you can reduce the usage of the zero so it is really useful in the IOT because in the IOP the frequency is really low such as the door or your home you need you need to open the door very often you 
open and close the door within a really small time, a really short time. So if you don't, just you, if you don't have this kind of a scale to zero function, you just keep using the resources. It's kind of waste. And it is also really helpful for us to write the router code just when we did. And I don't know the rest of you have really used the Windows code before. I don't know whether you did it before. Uh, that was a long time ago, maybe 10 years. At that time, we just pressed the button and then we just did the corresponding process and everything's done. But with the Knative, we can do with that really conveniently. And the Combo Router standard. We can also do that via the corresponding kit, which provided by the Camel K. Um, Camo also provide a connective event. So it can be connected to the Kinetic service on the Kubernetes. So that your application can be loaded easily on the Kubernetes. And the modules we just mentioned can be separated according to the requirement uh, request of the business. We can call all these modules according to the scenarios. Well, actually, due to the time limitation, we cannot talk too much. And if you are interested, you can scan the QR code on the right-hand side. It is the website of the Camel K. And on the left-hand side, it is the chatting group of the Camel group. And for the request or the call, you can you are welcome to join us. Well, actually, all this kind of call has already been available. It is written by the Python language. It is very really simple. And so much from us. And thank you very much for your time. So any questions from the floor? And if you have any questions, we are welcome to talk to us privately later or now. And if you don't have any questions, well, you're welcome to scan the QR code and join our chatting group. Okay, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.